Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Data Driven Decision Making. I'm Danielle Lawrence, the marketing specialist here at Davin, and I'm thrilled to be your host today. So, in the next 45 minutes, get ready to be amazed as we explore how AI is revolutionizing the way we strategize, plan, and make those critical business choices. So, whether you're joining us from the boardroom, home office, or anywhere in between, this webinar promises to empower you with the knowledge that you can put into action immediately. So at any time during this event, you can use a dedicated chat to ask your questions and we'll be answering them throughout the session. Note that today's session is also being recorded and we'll be sure to send to all attendees in the coming days. So buckle up, tune in and get ready to learn how to make better data driven decisions with Microsoft Fabric. Before we jump into things, however, here's a brief overview of Davin and what we do. We specialize in enterprise resource planning, cloud solutions, retail solutions, and custom solutions, and we operate in over 13 Caribbean territories. Our experts are certified in Microsoft Azure, Power Platform, and Dynamics 365, and we're the largest, most experienced Microsoft Dynamics partner in the territory, as well as a tier one cloud solutions provider. Additionally, we support an extensive client base with over 100 active customers across the English and Dutch speaking Caribbean. So now that we're all briefed on who we are at Davin and what we do, I'll hand over the floor to our data engineer, Stefania, to kick off this presentation. So whenever you're ready, Stefania. All right, sure. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. All right, perfect. All right, so a pleasant morning to everyone. And again, as Daniel said, welcome to our data-driven decision-making webinar. Our goal in this webinar is to allow you to see how Microsoft is uh, using artificial intelligence to give you that additional, or that, that step up or to give you that benefit to get as much insight out of your data as possible without you thinking that you need to have some expert do it for you. So our agenda today is. Sorry, Stefania, I think you'll have to unmute. Okay, somebody muted me, right? Can you hear me again? Yes, we can hear you. All right, perfect. Yeah. So our agenda today is going to follow the part of introducing you to Microsoft Fabric. Uh, it's going to be a term that may be new for some of y'all, um, but the main aim of this session is to show you that Power BI has not gone anywhere. Power BI still exists. Power BI is still that solution that you'll be using, but it's now being encapsulated in this Microsoft Fabric solution that Microsoft is now driving forward with. So. Any questions that you may have, feel free to put it in the chat. Any queries that you have as well, you can open up your mic at the end. There's a Q&A session where you can ask your questions there. And I trust that my colleague Jade Ganga, who is also on the call, and I would be able to get you all to some state of readiness to go on this journey, this digital transformation journey of your data. Perfect. So before we get into Microsoft Fabric itself, we have to look at the landscape that we're currently in. So right now, seeing that the pandemic is quote unquote over or it has the 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 aggressive fault and the aggressive pause that companies had over the last few years, we are now readjusting to hybrid work as well as some companies are totally remote like Darwin. We're also looking at where companies are trying to cut down their costs, cut down their expenditures, and also even though they're trying to cut these costs, they still want to gain as much insight as possible. Another thing that is also causing this gap now with decisions, especially with regard to data, is that in many organizations, we have multiple BI tools being deployed. And I'm sure in your company alone, you know somebody who's very good at Excel, somebody who's very good at SQL, and somebody who may be very good at Power BI or even Tableau or some other some other BI solution that's deployed in your environment. Added to that, we now have a growth in data sources. So previously, you'd have just looked at the sales that a company would have had, or you just looked at the clients that you have. But now many, many companies are broadening their scope by looking at social media. So they're looking to see 
what is being said about my company on social media, how we're trending, what complaints you're receiving. So sentiment analysis is driving a lot of data sources that are external to your business. And also that we can see an increase by user adoption where more users are trying to get more insight out of their daily work or whatever their work tasks are. So they are using these solutions, be it Excel, be it Power BI, be it even Google Analytics. They're using these solutions to try to understand where they are and where they can go. Now, that brings about a certain level of complexity. And as my in my role as a data engineer, my main aim is to, to break that complexity down to make it as simple as possible, especially in the Caribbean, where we are now basically starting on our digital transformation journey in terms of data. And when you speak to a customer, the customer says, okay, we'd like to, uh, to analyze this, so this side of our business or this area of our business. And you start speaking about the different solutions. So you probably say, hear somebody talk about data factory, or you hear somebody talk about Power BI, or you hear someone else talk about Azure Synapse Analytics. The person looks at you confused because they're like, okay, what are these different things that you're speaking of? And even as the slide is saying here, many of these projects, they have so many different subsystems. You have to lead with a cloud architect to make sure that your on-premise infrastructure can connect to the cloud so that your data could be seamlessly passing over to that solution. And even there are many different products. So within one company, you may have both Power BI and Tableau being used, or even some of the other solutions that we have on the market today being deployed. So it's bringing about a greater need for integration. And these integrations get more complex the more integrations you add to it. So when Microsoft saw that trend was happening, and that's been happening for, I would say, for the past five or so years, they decided that it was time to change the game a little bit and to unify things. And that unification is coming through what's called Microsoft Fabric. And they call it the data platform for the era of AI. Now, let's look at it. Everybody's talking about ChatGPT. And why are they talking about ChatGPT? Because ChatGPT changed the way in which we approach our work even today. No matter what aspect, whether it's a student, whether it's a businessman, whether it's someone who's just looking to get some information on some trip they want to do, ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, has changed our approach to these things. So Microsoft, realizing that, has decided to bring all of these segmented solutions, which you could have connected, and bring it under this umbrella called Microsoft Fabric. So Power BI sits there, Azure Synapse is going to sit there, and tie it in with artificial intelligence to allow you to get greater insight into what you're doing for your business. Now, just bear with me a few minutes as I just do a quick walkthrough of Microsoft Fabric, and then we get into our demo. So, what exactly do you get when you have this Microsoft Fabric environment? So the main thing I want you to know is that it's a software as a solution. So software as a service solution, meaning that it's similar to Microsoft 365, where you have your mail, you have your storage, which may be SharePoint, you have your collaboration, which may be Microsoft Teams. Microsoft has done the same thing. We're bringing it on the Fabric. You have Power BI, you have your data factory, and you have your data science environments through Azure Machine Learning, as well as your data engineering environments through Azure Synapse Analytics. And how does this look? Now, underneath all of those solutions that I just called there, there's one central data repository, and that's what's called the data lake. So on my next slide, you see that this called a one lake. On that one lake, you have all your data. And what's connected to that data is all those different subsystems, so be it Data Factory, be it Power BI, and we all focus today will be Power BI, but now you're understanding that Microsoft is trying to bring up, bring forth this unified data platform that allows you to, instead of having to understand how should I integrate this, or how should I integrate that, or where should I go and get that, they bring you to this one place, which is in Fabric, to do all of your data platform, to work with all of your data platform needs. Now, with that aside, I want us to now focus on a persona that's specific to Power BI. And why? Because we want to see what has Microsoft done in terms of artificial intelligence in Power BI to get you on that data-driven journey. Now, the demo that I'm going to walk through is going to require me to take off my camera because I need to look at another screen. But as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. 
and or feel free to write it down and you can ask it at the end because there's a lot of content that's going to come at you with this demo. All right, so without much further ado, let me share my screen and get into our demo on AI driven insights. Is my screen visible, Denise? Yes, good to go. All right, perfect. Nice. All right, so you see I'm here in Power BI Desktop. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Power BI Desktop, but Power BI Desktop is the tool that you use mainly to build your Power BI reports. So in here you have things like get data. You can choose whatever sources you want to get data from. So you can come into Power BI Desktop. You choose whatever sources you need to get your data from. You connect to that and then you either import or you transform that data before you import it into Power BI Desktop. Once you're finished with developing your report, you then publish that report to the Power BI service, which is in the cloud, where you now have the ability to share. Now, before you even get to publishing that report, Microsoft has placed certain artificial intelligence features along this journey. So let's start with our transformation journey. So I'm opening Power Query here. Right. So in Power Query, I have these four queries that I'm using to build my report. So that report that you're seeing in the background there is based on these four queries. It's based on a fictional company. So this is nothing to do with any company that you know of. It's purely fictional, right? And for our sake, I've placed it in the Caribbean. So you'd see that there is going to refer to countries within the Caribbean. Now, this is the data that's coming out of the financial aspect of the company. So I'm connected to their financial um, database. And this is the information we're pulling off of it. We also have some targets that the manager is supposed to hit. So we have that information coming into Power BI. We also have who the respective managers are. Now in our financial area, I want you to I want to show you something very interesting. So embedded in here, there's a transformation that allows you, it sort of predicts what it is you're trying to do. So say for example, I wanted to take my segment and my discount band, and I wanted to join these together. So if I wanted to create something called a discount by segment, I could actually use the control key on my keyboard and select these two. And then I can right click and say add columns from examples. So you see this little lightning symbol. That lightning symbol tells you that, OK, there's some sort of intelligence that's going to happen here. So you're going to click on it. It's going to say, OK, you want to add columns from example. And the example will be. Actually, let's give our column its name, so we're going to call it. Discount by segment. And we're going to choose government. I'm going to put a dash and I'm going to choose medium. All right, and then I'm going to hit the enter key. When I hit the enter key, the AI in the background has looked at the two columns I've selected and it has said, OK, I think I know what you're trying to do here, Savannah. You're trying to take the segment and put combine that with the or merge these two columns together with a dash in between. And now it's telling me, OK, well, this is what I'm going to do for the other rows. And I'm going to say, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to click OK. And now that I've clicked OK, this has now become central to my data model when I load it into the cloud. Now, if you notice in the top right hand corner here, Right, in the top right hand corner, you see something marked AI Insights. Now, what is this AI insight saying? It's saying here that we can do analytics based on, we can do AI analytics based on text, vision, and Azure machine learning. But I want to point out to you now that requires a specific type of licensing. So the features I'm going to show you today are based on the Power BI Pro licensing. But if at any point in time you want to start tapping into text analytics, say you do have sentiment data that you want to analyze, or you have vision data, which could be uh, either the, the pictures of your products or whatever it is you're doing, or if you do your own machine learning, um, if you build your own machine learning uh, models and you want to add that to your report, you have the ability to do so. so I'm just pointing this out to you, but we're not going to go into that because that is a whole session in itself. All right. So we're happy with the change that we've made thus far. We're going to close and apply this to our model. 
and this is now going to show up within our model. So it's going to load. I said so loaded that row. Now, just a brief walkthrough of what this report is going to show. So on this report, we have a sales page. So it shows the sales performance of the company. So it says that there's something wrong with one of my visuals here. I can quickly change it, but for now, I wouldn't get caught in that rabbit hole. So it's showing that we have our total sales units sold, then our total sales by manager, total sales according to the calendar year and product. We have a similar layout for our profit, a similar layout for our country. So we see what the country analysis is like. And then I have two hidden pages or three hidden pages, but two I'm going to focus on called AI analysis. Now what's happening here? In this AI analysis page, what we're looking at here is the AI features that Microsoft has made available to you using this Power BI Pro license I mentioned before. All right. So the first one that everyone should be quite aware of is Q&A, which is question and answers. You're asking a question of your data. It's really simple. You just say, OK, if I want to know what's the bottom three products. And it gives me that. And now if I notice here, it's telling me last year's sales. So it's giving me the according to last year's sales. But if I wanted it by profit, I could say by total profit. Right. And I, if I click total profit, I see it according to total profit. So I'm seeing that those products are actually desk mount, my footrest, the desk lamps. Those are the, the products that are propping up the bottom of my product table. Now, if this is the visual that you desire to see, you have the option. Let's zoom in here. You have this option to click on this button here that allows you to convert this to be a standard visual. So now you have a standard visual sitting here based on a question that you asked of your data set. Another thing you can do, say for example, you have a line chart that is showing the performance of the company over the months. You can actually try to explain what is causing this decrease. So if I right click on this data point here, I have the option to analyze. And it's going to tell me, do I want to explain the decrease? So I'm going to explain the decrease. So let's explain our decrease. And it opens up this window that says, here's the analysis of your 12.65% decrease in total sales. No, you didn't know that before. So now that AI is telling you that's the percentage of decrease you had since January to February. And it gives you a breakdown as to by month and sales target. You could either see it by month name and profit target. You can see it based on the month name and weekday, and you can also choose different visuals. So on this first one, we're looking at a waterfall chart. We can change that to either be a stack column chart. You have the option to do a scatter plot. You also have the option to do a ribbon chart. So if I want to do a ribbon chart for this one, I can select ribbon chart, and it's going to give me that ribbon chart based on the report that we're looking at. Now you see these buttons moving. That's because it's actually sending that communication back saying, OK, please analyze this and show me it in the form of a ribbon chart. Now, according to time, I do not know if I'll have the time for it to fully load because sometimes it takes a little while. But I'm trusting. Let me see if I could try another one. OK, it's taking a little while. All right, so we'll allow it to do its thing in the background. But now you see that you're able to explain this decrease. Now, if you wanted to explain the increase, however, so you see here we have an increase in March. We also have an increase in July. So let's see if we can analyze this. So we're going to analyze explain the increase in July. And it's going to tell us that it has something to do with our education segment. And it's also telling us that that increase between June and July was an increase June of 10.37%. Somebody's mic is open. All right, no problem. OK, perfect. So here we're seeing immediately what that increase is like. And it's similarly, if we did the same thing for our March and we did analyze, we're able to see what that percent of increase was like. So we see that between February and March, if we look at it here, February to March, we see the Wednesday, we had an increase of close to what? That's 55 million in sales that took place in that time period. And then building upon that 55, we then had a climb up to 80. So which eventually brought marches. So if you were to look at Q1, Q1 will show actually quite strong. But to understand that, you'll have to drill down to know that there was actually a drop in February, which was in the middle of Q1. All right. So all that sort of analysis you can get by just using the artificial intelligence baked within Power BI desktop itself. All right. Now, another visual that we have here is actually called a decomposition tree. 
Now I want to build this decomposition tree in front of you so you know that it's not a gimmick. So I'm going to add some data here. So I want to analyze this. So I'm, I'm explaining it by the country name, the segment, the product, and the calendar year. But I want to analyze my total profits. So let's look for total profit. So I'm using my measure total profit. And because I'm explaining it by the country name, so the country name would come from our, if we go to our financial table here. So the country name is coming from the regional managers. The segment is coming from our financial table. And the product is also coming from our financial table and calendar year is coming from our date. So we're explaining what is happening to our total profit according to these different, what do you call it, um, these different segments within your explain by. So I'm going to open here. I'm going to click on the plus sign next to total profit. I'm going to choose what's giving me this high value. Now you notice that you have the option to choose which segment you want on your own, or you could choose to see the low value. Just to, po to point out, once you see this bulb, the bulb is telling you that that's AI that's going to run to give you some sort of analysis. So I'm going to select high value for now. And I'm going to want to, so it's giving me my segment by default, but I actually don't want segment. I actually want my country name first. So I'm going to actually drag country name right on top of segments. So my country name comes up first. And now if I click on Antigua and Barbuda, which is the country that has the highest profit, I can see that the segment that we're selling to, which we so we're calling education, government, those different area segments. So the segment we're selling to is what is driving most of that profit, which is education. Now it's going to get a little sticky, so I'm going to put this in focus mode, which is this button here. All right, so we're going to see it a little bit more, a little bit clearer. So I'm saying, okay, education is driving that, but what product are we selling? So that's giving us this high profit in education. So we realize that we're selling desk lamps. So it seems as though the schools or whatever institutions we're selling to, be it a university, need a significant amount of desk lamps. So that's why we generated so much profit in Antigua in the education se sector. Now, if we want to see this according to the calendar year, because you maybe we want to know what year was it that really drove this high figure in total profit, we can say, okay, let's do high value again. And we're now able to see that in calendar year 2022, which is just as the pandemic was sort of settling off, that there was a, a significant investment made in Antigua in the education sector for desk lamps. Now, this is explaining the decomposition tree. And as I said, I want you to see me build it so you know that this wasn't just some sort of gimmick or some sort of picture that we have pasted here. Now, going on to the next set of AI visuals, so I'm going to go to my next page. We have actually there are four visuals on this page. One of them is actually hidden with this button, but I'll show you in a bit. I'll, but let's start with our key influencers. Now, with key influencers, you have the ability to say, OK, what influences my profit to increase or what influences my profit to decrease? So if I chose decrease, it's going to run an analysis and say that, OK, when the product is desk mount, we have a higher chance that my profit is going to decrease. If it is, I want to know what's going to cause the increase. We see the product is wall mount. So I'll tell any one of my managers, say, hey, focus on selling wall mounts is actually our most profitable product. So that way you can actually drive your business better. If I want to see the top segments, so they could split it into segments, they give you five segments by default. So it said it's ranked by the average profit and the population count will actually be the amount of transactions that took in place. So we see that it's 809 that was done, 809 transactions were done. And as compared to the 896 that was done with segment four, and we're getting 357K in profits. So if I click on this, it's going to tell me that that's actually your desk lamp and your segment is education. So this is now giving more insight to whoever is viewing the report to say, OK, you know what? Let's make sure that we set up some sort of a strategy, be it a, a marketing strategy to make sure we sell more desk lamps within a certain time period, especially now it's back to school season. Maybe we need to sell that in this time period. Moving away from our key influencers visual, we're going to go to the visual at the bottom, which will be our line visual. Now, this line visual, what you see here highlighted are actually called anomalies. Now, these anomalies are going to explain or going to give further insight as to what's causing either this increase 
or the decrease of your sale. So say, for example, I came to Thursday, the 2nd of June 2022, and I clicked on that value. I would see it as it says, the total sales were unexpectedly high on this Thursday. So maybe it is that on Thursdays, we don't regularly sell that much, but seem as though this Thursday stood out. So they struck it as an anomaly and it's alerting you. So it's letting you know that, okay, the country name is actually Trinidad and Tobago. So these are the possible explanations. So the total sales for Trinidad and Tobago was unusually high, which may have lifted your total sales across the board. Then they said the product is office desk. So they said total sales for product office desk was unusually high. So that was also drove that increase in total sales. And then in this case, the segment here is not education, it's actually mid-market. So it says that mid-market was a segment that was being highlighted in this particular time period, and it actually caused that increase in total sales. Now, just by clicking on this anomaly option, so let me show you how you get that anomaly. So if you go to more options here, you will not see it show up because I've actually turned it on already. But if you were to click on the format icon, which is this paint, here and you do more options. At the bottom of this, you see this section that says find anomalies. So at the bottom of the screen, you see find anomalies. This is what you want to turn on to be able to find the anomalies in your bits, your line charts, or any chart that's showing you performance over time. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to click the drop down by find anomalies, and it allows me to choose the sensitivity. So I'm going to choose how sensitive it is. I'm going to explain it either by the country name, the product or the segment, which is why you saw when I clicked on Thursday, it showed me what was the country, what was the product that was sold and what the segment was being sold to. And then I can do certain features like change the color, choose my expected range and the fill. So if you notice within here, there's a color that's inside here. Let me zoom in a little bit more. All right, so there's a color that you see, a, a orange color there. That's called the expected range, which is your expected range of increase or decrease. That's what the AI is telling you can that can take place to drive some sort of an anomaly within your data. All right. So now that we've covered, so actually on this journey, we've covered adding a column. We then went to Q&A. We looked at how to analyze. We haven't touched smart narrative yet. I'm going to come to that in a bit. We looked at our decomposition tree. We looked at our key influencers and we looked at anomalies. Now in front of us here is a scatter chart. So what this scatter chart is actually showing us is actually showing, so every bubble here is actually a country. So it's explaining to us the total units sold in that particular country and the total sales for that country. What is also hidden behind here is the total profit but what the total profit is doing it is basically showing you the bubble size so the size of the bubble is determined by how much profit that particular country is making now say for example we want to split this into three sections we want to know what our lowest countries are the countries that basically bring in the lowest sales the countries that are in the middle and the countries that are in the highest now it's very easy to see what the highest will be so the highest would be these three here. So for sure you say, okay, that's Jamaica, that's Trinidad, that's Antigua. Okay, we can see that. But what will they consider to be the middle? And maybe it's just these two will be our lowest in the cluster. So let's cluster this and say, okay, we're going to split this into three clusters. So I'm clicking the ellipsis in the corner here, and I'm choosing automatically find clusters. Let me zoom in for those who can't see that yet. So I clicked on the ellipsis, and then I chose automatically find clusters. Is going to bring up a dialog box. So I'm going to choose my clusters. For now, I'm going to call it class country name. And instead of clusters, call it rank. All right. And then we're going to leave the description as is. And the number of clusters we're going to choose is three. Because we want to see it by the lowest rank, the middle rank, and our highest rank. So I'm going to choose OK. And there we go. We now can see that it's split into three clusters. So our lowest cluster is actually made up of the country Grenada to this will be Curacao. So we have one, we have five countries making up our lowest cluster. Our middle cluster is made up of Belize to this will be Barbados, and we have four countries within that middle cluster. And before we identify what our top three were, 
But now it's a lot easier for anybody that's coming to your report to see, okay, this is how we are split according to sales. And if you want to add the name of the country instead of just having to hover over it, you can do that by using something called either category label or data label on the visual itself. All right. So with that, we are now able to cluster our data and you can easily see where the countries are being ranked within that scale of how their sales performance is. But I also said that there's a fourth visual on this page that's being hidden. So let's turn on that fourth visual. So we're going to click on our smart narrative button here. And what this is doing, the AI is now running against this entire page. So it's looking at everything on the page here, you're looking at your data set and giving you a summary of what's inside of here. So this summary is saying that, okay, my summer sales trended up, which resulted in a 185.16% increase between Tuesday, January 1st, 2013 and Thursday, August 31st, 2023. So it's telling you that there's a trend that's been going upwards with your sales. They said that your sales started trending at a particular time period. So it fell down by 19.63% and this will, uh, let's sum this up to eight months over this time period between February 11, 2018. And then it also told you that there was a drop of just over 1 million to 1.4, so from 1.7 to 1.4 during its steepest decline, which was Sunday, February the 11th and Thursday, October 18, 2018. Now, if we were to look at this entire line chart, so I'm going to expand this slider here. It is very hard to tell that. So this summary that you're seeing here by the smart narrative, it's very hard to tell that by just looking at it like this. Even if we were to go say to our sales page here, and we were to look at this over time, it's still hard to tell what your increase and your decrease would be like. So that's why Microsoft have allowed you to have this smart narrative to be there individual that you can actually use it. They've also allowed smart narrative to be embedded in a visual itself. So if I don't know if you can see this icon here. Oh no, it's gone. All right, so there's an icon here that looks like a page. It's actually your smart narrative. So if I click on that, it gives me this sort of a pop-up box that says, okay, this is a description of what's happening in this particular chart during the time period that you're looking at. So within the space of, I would say about 15 minutes or so, we have now looked at more than five areas where artificial intelligence is baked into Power BI to give you that extra boost in doing, an, in doing your analysis in your company. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pass the battle onto my colleague Jade, who is now gonna move from Power BI desktop to the Power BI service to show you two key outstanding features that Microsoft have there, which is not Q&A, to allow you to see what other insights you can get from your data. So Jade, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Stefania. So I am looking at the report from the Power BI service. And what we would like to show you is the ability to get quick insights through the AI. So this is our report. You will click on the three ellipses to select quick insights. So when you click that, it, it might take a little while, but it will generate uh, visuals for you based on the data. So the AI will go through your data and it will come up with different KPIs and different visuals that you may not have thought of. And for example, we can look at the count of for years for sales targets. We can look at the average of manufacturing prices. There are a lot of different visuals that the AI will generate for you. And the really cool part about this is you have the option to add this to your report. So we can also use focus mode to look at the visual in a better manner for you to look at it, understand it, decide if you think this is important and if you would like to add it to your report. And then you can use the pin to just add it to your report. The next thing that I would like to show is using the actual report in the service. So what you would do is you would click on Get Insights. So you would choose the sales page and click Get Insights, and it will pop up in this mm -hmm. pane on the site. 
what this does is the AI looks at the various KPIs on your report and it will give you an explanation for each visual. So for example, we have total sales where you just have the total sales for the entire time period. But the insights that the AI has generated allows you to get a little more detail. So you see your overall sum of sales and it gives you the value. It also allows you to see the sum of sales for the calendar year 2023. And it tells you that it is significantly lower than other segments. We also, the same applies for units sold. So you will get an explanation as well as it tells you what product and the segments that you, your analytics is based off of. And if we go to the profits page, you see that the analytics automatically changes. So we have analytics generated for the total profit, which once again gives you the overall sum of profits, as well as tells you the year the sum of profits is significantly lower for. And you also get analytics for the gauge. So the gauge analytics looks at total profit versus the total target or the total goal. And the analytics generated by the AI gives you a specific amount for the total profit. It also tells you that the manager, Sam, has generated 308 million roughly, and his sales target would have been 6 million, which is significantly above his target. So you can see that the, the explanations basically help to make the visuals a little easier to understand and gives you a little more detail in terms of things that you would not just see on the visual itself. So the country page, we don't have any insights for the country page because it is based off of, well, the analytics is more specific to a country. So that is it for me. I will hand you back over to Stefania. Sure. Thank you, Jane. All right. So on this journey thus far, we have seen where we've moved from where Microsoft was, I would say, probably a few years. So we had the Q&A visual that have been there for a few years. We had the even that option to add an additional column by example that's been there for a few years then we started looking at using the analyze feature using the decomposition tree visual now that's the present what's the future so currently in preview there's the power bi copilot now i can only demo the power bi copilot in the aspect of doing measures but I decided to show you this video of what Microsoft has on the pipeline for the next few months, because every month there's an update to Power BI. So for the next few months, this is what is coming. So I trust that you're able to hear the audio from it. It's just a minute and 10 seconds. Away. Introducing the next generation of AI in Microsoft Power BI. Copilot in Power BI empowers your people to unlock the full potential of your data and move from data to insights faster. Now, with Copilot in Power BI, you can use natural language to bring your data to life. Simply describe the visuals and insights you're looking for, and Next Generation AI will create your report and help you refine it. You can then dig into this data further by asking a question, and Copilot will find the best answer. Not only does Copilot help you visualize your data, but it taps into Power BI's advanced analysis capabilities to help you find key influencers and outliers and create forecasts. Copilot can summarize your data into easy to understand text narratives that help others quickly get important and relevant insights. And for analysts who are creating calculations and modeling data, you can simply describe what you want and the code is automatically generated. With Copilot in Power BI, turning data into impact has never been easier. All right. So as they said, the last option would be taking your taking a question and turning it into code. So our last demo is going to be that feature, which is actually in preview now. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you what measures we have created already. So you see we have total profit, we have total sales. 
say for example, we wanted to know our year to date profit or year to date sales. There are three ways in which we can do this. If I right click on my measures table, I can either choose a new measure, which is going to give me a box that looks similar to Excel, where you have to put in a formula. Another way I can do this is by choosing this option here that shows. Let's find this a bit. This option that shows a quick measure. Now, what that quick measure will allow me to do, it will allow me to choose some sort of like a menu driven option to show what sort of measure I'd like to create. Now, with Copilot now, we have the ability to ask suggestions. So it's telling me I need to sign in, which is actually quite new because I just demo tested the demo and it didn't ask me to sign in. This is why don't do this on live demos. Perfect. So that's a nice little bummer to the end of my demo, but I will let you know that <laughs> just as you saw in the video, you're able to take your, su your suggestion. So what I was going to do, I was actually going to ask it to give me my year to date for the entire year to date sales and was then be able to generate that. Now, not that it's blocking me from doing it, I wouldn't be able to show it, but I believe you would be able to test it because it is a preview feature that's available now in Power BI desktop. And with that, I'm going to switch back to my slides now. And we're going to go to our Q&A session. For any questions that anyone would have. I actually have a question, Stefania. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering as well. Um, we noticed that you use Power BI and Microsoft Fabric interchangeably. Um, what is the difference between them and is it the same thing? That's, that's a really fantastic question. All right, so what is Power BI? What is Microsoft Fabric? Uh, I had tried to summarize it a bit before, but let me just go a little bit more into it. So if we consider fabric to be sort of like a, a bucket, and within that bucket, you're able to add different components of the Microsoft Cloud space, be it their data solutions. Power BI is a data solution that sits within that fabric environment, which is that bucket. So when you sign in to Microsoft Fabric, it allows you, so I can do this actually by showing a short demo, because I have it here available to me. I'm going to go to app.powerbi.com. I just have to be a bit careful to make sure I don't show anything from the customer I was doing before. So I'll just let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. And so let's go to. Just let me know when you can see my screen. Not yet. Yeah, let me share. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's visible. All right, perfect. All right, so what I've logged in here, you see, I've, I've signed into app.powerbi.com. So let me just zoom in here. All right. Now, you notice that it says Power BI in my workspace, but at the bottom left hand corner, there's this Power BI logo that is now visible here. So for, for many, this would not be the experience that you have, right? What this Power BI logo is telling me that if I click on it, I have the option to go to different areas within Microsoft Fabric. So right now I'm in the Power BI section of Microsoft Fabric. I can actually go to the data factory area of it or under Synapse, I can go to data engineering, data science, warehouse or real-time analytics. So all of this is contained within Microsoft Fabric. So it says all your data in one location, you organize, collaborate, you create. You explore the experiences by doing Power BI, Data Factory, or any one of these Synapse environments. I trust that I did ease that for anybody who would have had that question. I see Hugh has his mic open. Hello? Hi, um, Hugh. Do you have a question for us? Uh, 
right? I guess not. All right, so if there are no questions, I'm not seeing any in the queue or no. Okay, I'm seeing one five minutes ago. Does your team provide training or courses where one can learn how to use the Power BI tool? That's actually a great question. Yes, we do provide training. So we do training to companies according to, we do it according to groups. So the best thing would be to not have your group be bigger than 10 people, because that way there tend to be some people who get disconnected throughout the trainings. But we do it in groups of like 10, or I would say for the most about 12. We come in, we do either a three day training with you, which is just us showing you how you can get started with Power BI, or we do a five day training with you, which is actually allowing you to do labs as well, that you're able to get that experience of building your reports as well. So you can always liaise with Daniel or any one of our sales um, accounts executives, and you'll be able to get more on that. Anybody else with a question? All right. Well, if that's it, it's 11.45. Well, 11.46. So, Daniil, I pass the floor back to you. And I would like to say thank you, everybody, for making this webinar what it has been thus far. OK, great. And there you have it, an insightful journey into the realm of Microsoft Fabric. So thank you everyone for being a part of this webinar. Your engagement, questions, and passion for learning has really made it a remarkable experience. Um, so as we come to an end, just a quick reminder that power, the power of AI isn't just about technology, but it's about harnessing intelligence to drive innovation, enhance competitiveness, and create a future where decisions are truly data-driven. We've designed an analytics assessment for customers who wish to modernize their legacy platform and take their decision-making process to a whole new level through AI. So if you're interested in Microsoft Fabric, Power BI, and its capabilities, please complete this assessment and someone from our team would reach out to begin your data journey. So we've just placed that assessment form in the chat so you could feel free to click on it and it will take you to our data assessment form or analytics assessment form. Again, thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. Thank you so much to Fania and Jade for this insightful presentation. And we look forward to hosting you all for future webinars. So stay safe, have a great week ahead, and you guys take care. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care. Thank you.